The number of wine producers globally has steadily grown in recent years, and as supply increases, price falls. As a result, French farmers have been having difficulty selling their grapes and their wine on the global market. In response, some farmers have decided that it's not worthwhile to grow grapes and make wine. They've been leaving the industry altogether. But if enough French farmers leave the market, prices for French wine may well rise again. The vintner cannot control the price. It's market forces that determine prices. What he can do is to choose how much output to produce. This farmer has a decision to take. How many acres is he going to give over to the production of vines in order to produce wine? The answer is it partly depends upon the price of the product. But the price is determined by supply and demand for the product. And the supply and the demand for the product we can understand in terms of linear equations. For the great majority of goods, a lower price will mean a greater quantity demanded, so we expect a downward sloping demand curve. The extent to which consumers purchase more at a lower price will vary between products, but it's often possible to estimate the extent in order to produce a demand function. We would also expect an upward sloping supply function. In the short run, producers find it difficult to increase output because of diminishing returns, and producers can only increase output at higher cost, so producers require higher prices to do so. Hence we have an upward sloping supply curve. We can find equilibrium price by plotting the supply curve and the demand curve and observing where they meet. But we can also find the equilibrium price mathematically. Now here we have a market with a demand curve and a supply curve. Price is determined by the interaction of buyers and sellers. And we'll assume for now that supply and demand are determined by price alone. So if we consider demand first of all, we would have Q, the quantity, is a function of the price. But given that in economics output is the independent variable, we use what we call an inverse function. That is to say, we want P on the left-hand side. So we'll write P equals some function of Q. So one simple but useful form for a demand curve will be that P equals AQ plus B, which we'll represent diagrammatically in the way that you can see here, where the B is the distance marked and the A is the speed at which the demand curve is falling. So in that diagram, A will be less than zero. We've got a negative slope. As the quantity increases, the price falls. But B will be a positive amount so a reasonable estimate of the parameters might be something like P equals minus 2Q, and we'll put D to show that this is demand, P equals minus 2QD plus 40, where Q equals some quantity per period of time in millions of casks, and the price is in euros per cask. Now we've got a supply function, an inverse supply function, and a reasonable idea might be something like P equals half QS plus 20, where this time we're going to have a positive slope. So half is positive, and the 20 is represented on the diagram by the distance shown. So we've got a positive slope for the supply curve, a negative slope for the demand curve. Now in equilibrium, the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity 
demanded. So P equals minus 2QD plus 40. That's demand. P equals half QS plus 20. That's the supply function. So in equilibrium, minus 2Q plus 40 will have to equal a half Q plus 20. So bringing the terms with Q onto one side of the equation, minus 5 over 2Q equals minus 20. Q equals 8. But we don't just want to know the quantity. We want to know the price as well. And we can find the price by going back to one of the two equations and substituting. So P equals minus 2QD plus 40, if we use the demand curve. Now we can substitute in for Q, which we found. P equals 24. And that's the price expressed in euros per cask. So when we assumed a free market with no government intervention, and when we assumed that supply and demand are only affected by price, we were able to work out an equilibrium. Now those assumptions that we made might seem unrealistic and we'll drop them in a later film. But where markets can be represented by simultaneous equations, we can find equilibrium by simply solving for those equations.